Ivan Fyodorovich Sponka and his aunt by Jim Poyser, based on the short story by Nikolai Gogol. Sir! <laughs> Corporal Sponka, come in, come in. Oh, uh, thank you, Colonel. Another beautiful Siberian day, eh? Uh, yes, sir. Well, you can have too much sleet, in my opinion. Still, could be worse. I hear Borzov's dragoons are currently stationed on a frozen lake 700 miles north of Yakutsk. <laughs> 24-hour blizzards, minus 50, giant icicles smashing into them from the craggy precipices above. Well, they'd probably give anything for some sleet. <laughs> Cheer themselves up a bit. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely, sir. Tell me, Schmonker, do you like the army? Oh, yes, sir. Are you sure? Oh, God, yes. Well, it's just, well, you hear things from the men about drinking, gambling, dancing. Sir? Well, it appears you don't do any of that. Well, no, sir. I never really, uh... Uh, what do I mean? It happened There's to... some beautiful women in this neck of the woods, you know. Circassians, Tartars. A lot of them are widows, too, thanks to us. I've never been one for womanizing, sir. But you're forever tucked away in your rooms. Uh, what do you get up to in there night after night? Well, uh, I polish my buttons, press my trousers, that sort of thing. The lads have said you don't really make an effort to fit in, sir. The fact is, Sponka, how can I put this? I've received a number of letters from your aunt. My aunt's been writing to you? No, she's been writing to you. But we never let the men read letters from home. It's bad for morale. Don't want people missing their old life, you see. Best they forget all about it. Oh, I just thought no one had written to me. No, your aunt's been quite a regular correspondent. And the fact is, Sponka, well... Your mother has been a bit ill. Oh. In fact, she's been very, very ill indeed. Oh. But the good news is, she's no longer ill. And the bad news? The bad news is, she's no longer alive. Oh. And let me see, I, I've got your aunt's letter here. My dear nephew Ivan Fyodorovich, I'm sending you some clothes, four fine linen shirts. <laughs> uh, they, they never got here, of course. You know, bloody peasants, uh, steal anything. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Now both your parents are gone, I can't possibly manage on my own. You'll have to leave the army and come and manage your estate as is the Russian way, etc., etc., so... There you go. I'll arrange your discharge papers straight away. But I don't want to leave the army. Nonsense. What do you want to stay here for? It's my home. I'm not sure your Aunt Vasilisa would agree with you there. But what about repelling Napoleon? Napoleon's dead. Is he? <laughs> Come on, sir. Wake up. Where are we? Omsk. Omsk? I thought we'd gone through Omsk hours ago. We did. But we had to go back. Why? I forgot to stop. You know, you sit up there in a world of your own, lose track of where you are. Anyway, Omsk it is. So I'll just change your horses and we'll set off again in an hour. How long, dear Katerinburg? We usually do it in three and a half days, sir. Three and a half days? Can't you do it any faster? Well, for a few extra kopecks, I could probably shave ten minutes off. It hardly seems worth it. Which way is the end? That door there, sir. Oh. Ask for Gregor. Right. He does a great rusk. Best rusk in Omsk, some say. Come on, sir. Wake up. Where are we now? Saratov. How long to Kharkov? Kharkov? Well, I reckon we could probably be in Kharkov by Tuesday. Tomorrow? Week? Tuesday week? Oh, dear. Well, I'll never get home. Where's home, sir? About 80 miles from Kharkov. Little village called Gadyach. Near Poltever, is it? Oh, yes. Do you know it? My name, sir. My wife ran off with a lumber merchant from down near there. Oh. She was a forest girl, you see. Always a sucker for logs. You married, sir? Married? Me? Well, I don't... Uh, no, I, I mean... I was to say, I did... Well, gosh, is that the time? We, we'd better get cracking, haven't we? Just get the horses changed, sir. Tuesday week, you say. That's a long journey. Well, I can't get the horses to go any quicker, sir. It's the hay, you see. They've got to get fed up. Otherwise, they don't have the energy. But it ain't half heavy. A stomach full of hay weighs them down. What they need is something that's like hay, but lighter. There, sir. Something for you to ponder on the journey. Yes. 
Thank you. Oh. Cock off at last. Thank God. Barman, some door rings and a sausage, please. Vodka, sir? Oh, no, thank you. Not having vodka? Oh, 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 what am I hearing? I'm just not very partial to it. Is there something wrong with you, sir? No. Well, I mean... Uh... Here, let me pour you a glass, sir. There, now. Down the hatch, Arkady Petrovich. That's what I always say when I have a tipple. Down the hatch, Arkady Petrovich. Go on, now you have to say it. <laughs> Down the hatch... Arkady Petrovich. Arkady Petrovich. Yes, splendid! <laughs> yeah, allow me to introduce myself. Grigory Grigoryevich Storchenko. Ivan Fyodorovich Sponka. Sponka? Oh, that may come somewhere. Where's your estate? It's the Bianchi. In Gadyach? Yes. Ah, well, that'll be where I know you from then, so we're practically neighbours. Oh. I'm up the road at Cortice. Yeah. Oh, it can only be five miles away. Will you stay and have some dinner with me? I'd like to, but I'm very tired. I'm just going to go straight to bed. No dinner for me tonight. Your door rings and sausage, sir. Oh. I forgot about them. <laughs> ah, you old dog. Hey, frightened of Uncle Grigori, are you? Oh. I may be a fat old drunk, but I'm a kindly man. <laughs> Bloody old barman, what do you think you're doing? Just taking your plate, sir. If I wanted my plate taken, I'd ask you to take it, you scoundrel. Now put it back! Put it back! Where was I? <laughs> you were saying how kindly you are. Yes. You know, Spunker, you simply must come and visit me on my estate as soon as possible, do you hear? Now, I won't take no for an answer. Very well, then. When the weather gets a bit nicer, perhaps. Uh, where are you going? Oh, I really have to get some sleep. And I'm not much of a socialite. You've hardly touched your door rings. Well, I... Not staying for cards. Oh, no. A couple of hands of Calabrias. Oh, I'm not really... Uh... There's musicians here, you know. Wild gypsies. I don't think so. How about some of this fruit jelly? Oh, I'm not sure. Take I... a good bit of fruit jelly with your dough, not it? It's got bilberries in it. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. All right, then. Have you eat? <laughs> Cody! And Vasilisa! Oh, you're here at last! Good trip! Nine days! Good gracious, is that all? Everything's so fast nowadays. Hey, what's that on your collar? I don't know. It looks okay. like a bilberry. You're a mucky pup. Yeah. Now, let me have a look oh. at you. Oh, you have grown. <laughs> I think you have as well, Auntie. You're looking very strong. Well, I've been mucking in, in the fields. You know, shifting hay bales and the like. Did a whole stack yesterday. You see, you can't get the staff these days. No. I tried looking for Philip on the bailiff, but could I find him? Drunk in a ditch, someone, I doubt. Right, let's get these trunks off the carriage. Don't you want a hand? No, 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 I can manage perfectly well. Uh. One, <laughs> two... Oh, the third one's heavy. What have you got in it? Some rocks. I got interested in Siberian minerals. <laughs> I'll bet that's not all you got interested in. Eh? I'll bet that's not all you got interested in, you young scamp. Actually, it was all I got interested in, really. Oh, you always were a modest little boy. Remember when you were at school? You'd always pretend to have failed tests. Oh. Used to drive your <laughs> mother up the wall, yeah. you being so modest. Yeah, but well, I did used to fail them. See? You're still exactly <clears throat> the same. <clears throat> anyway, can't stand here chatting with these three massive trunks strapped to me back. Let's go in. Yeah. Sit at the kitchen table and talk about the rules. Right, I've designed a small rotor. Oh, blimey, Aunt Vasilisa. That's a big book. It has to be just so, running an estate. Particularly when the serfs are so blarding useless. I hope I'll have time to annotate my rocks. Good Lord. There's a whole chapter on fruit pickling. Well, you can't take any chances with that sort of thing, and don't blaspheme. There's two chapters on loading the hay, when I'd have thought that was self-explanatory. Mm, that's what Yuri the unfortunate thought. 
Which one's he? He's the one with the huge cartwheel scar on his face. Oh, is that why they call him Yuri the Unfortunate? It didn't help. So, how do you find the peasants? Usually look in the nearest ditch. They're the bane of my life, Vanya, I can tell you. They're never satisfied. They ask for two loaves of bread a week, you give them two. Huh? Then, lo and behold, they're asking for three. And they don't eat it, you know. They just distill it into kvass, drink themselves stupid and topple into a ditch like oh. dominoes. No wonder I have to do everything myself. Speaking of which, I've got to go and tend to the pigs. You can help me. They need scrubbing and killing. In that order. I, I was hoping I might unpack first, Auntie. I've just travelled two and a half thousand miles. Nonsense! A bit of fresh air will do you good. Come on! Are you all right in here, love? Yes, thank you, Auntie. Although I think I might have torn a muscle chasing after that last pig. Mm, he just didn't want to be caught, did he? <laughs> no. No. Well, you should lie on the bed, not hunch yourself at the table over all them pebbles. I'm just sorting my collection out, Auntie. The, this one's quartz, look. What? And see how this bit of sedimentary rock is reddish in you. That's copper. Oh, copper. Mm. Your old mum would have been so proud of you. You're a nice boy, Vanya. Here, let me stroke you. There. Uh, 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 <laughs> hey. oh, oh. Get on, Auntie. You're hurting a bit. I don't know me old strength. That's the problem. Put off many a man I have. Never had a suitor for longer than a day. You scare them off, Lisa, your mum used to say. Anyway, no use dwelling on the past. To business. Oh, not more work. Well, this is half work, half pleasure. I wanted to talk to you about the man you said you met in Kharkov. What, Grigory Grigoryevich? Indeed. What did you make of him? Oh, he was him, the likeable enough fellow. Did he now? Did he? My dear, you know that little forest with the broad meadow next to it? Where? By the river. Oh, yes. Yeah, quite a few acres. And the grass is so lush. Yes. Well, it looks very good. It is very good. Oh, I can see the reapers now. The sweep of the scythes all shining in the sun, swooshing in unison. There's nothing like the Russian countryside, Vanka. There's nothing like it in all Russia. I'd agree with you there. Anyway, you remember Stefan Kuzmich? Uh, are you listening? Just leave those pebbles for a minute. This is important. Sorry. You see, all the land on the other side of our farm belonged to Stefan Kuzmich. Before you were born, he used to ride over to see your mother. Of course, only when your father was out. Not, not that I'm reproaching her. Oh, where was I? The bit of land. Yeah, you see, Stefan Kuzmich, by deed of title, left you that estate I was talking about. But quite what your dear mother did with that deed, I've got no idea. Searched everywhere for it, I have. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? Our horses seem happy enough in there without a bit of paper. What are you talking about? Our horses. You idiot, they're not our horses. They're Grigory Grigorievich's horses. In our field? That's the thing. It claims it's his field. When he moved here, he took on all Stefan Kuzmich's land. And I dare say he managed to get hold of that deed somehow, the old crook. Oh, well, it's only a small field, isn't it? Yes, but the grass in there. Think of the reapers and the scythes singing in the summer sun. Not to mention that forest. I wouldn't really call it a forest. Would forest call it what you like? A spinny, I'd call it. Yeah, don't answer back. There'd be mushrooms in there. You mark my words. Well, if you say so. I do say so. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I want you to stake your claim. That's what. How do I do that? Well, if Grigori was friendly towards you, he won't mind you dropping in on him, will he? Well, I don't know about that. Think of the reapers, Von. You think of the swoosh of the scythes. But what should I say to him? Just tell him there's been a misunderstanding. Tell him about Stefan's promise. He may well come around to our point of view. Are you trying to insult me, sir? Well, no, I wasn't. You come to my house, you drink my fruit tea, and then you accuse me of robbery. Well, sir, if I am a robber, I must be arrested. 
Send for the police this instant! I'm not... Oh, uh, what a mean... It... Don't just stand there stuttering, sir. Send for them. I insist. I won't be happy till I'm behind bars. Lock me up and throw away the key for the good of society. So, I'll take that as a no, then. I know that aunt of yours put you up to this, sir, and therefore I'll forgive you so long as you don't mention it again. So, Stephen... Now! Yeah. The dear... Yeah. In his... Yeah. Guy. When... Yeah. Guy. Splendid. That's that sorted out. Now, let's go into the drawing room. You must meet my mother and sister. Right, all. Ladies, may I introduce our neighbour, Ivan Sponker. Now, this is my mother and my sister, Masha. Very pleased to meet you. What did he say? He said he was pleased to meet you. Ooh. Ivan's a capital fellow, ladies. I personally have to go and see to one of the footmen now who had the temerity to improperly press my nankeen cotton trousers. God help that poor fellow. So, I will leave you with Ivan Fyodorovich, who has just got back from Siberia, and who, I dare say, has plenty of stories to tell. Capital. <laughs> so, Ivan, what was the... Siberia, like? Yes, I'll wager the stories you have to tell are most shocking. Of, of Tartar hordes, Mongolian warlords, wild winds and weather, and the daily struggle for survival against the raw and savage elements. Uh, there are some interesting rock formations. See, a lot of people assume Siberia is mostly sandstone. But in fact, there are a lot of chalk deposits. However, having said that, you can also find some hard fibrous sediments if you look really carefully. And then Theodore turned around to me and said, No, Ivan, it looks to me like these were cooled in dikes at intermediate depth. So they're not metamorphic at all. They're igneous rocks. We had a good laugh about that. <laughs> right! I think it's safe to say he won't be doing that again. Everything all right in here? <laughs> Looks like somebody died. <laughs> Masha, weren't you at the piano playing a gay baccarol? Mother, why the ashen look? <laughs> oh, well, who wants to come through to the dining room for a spot of lunch? Oh, me, me, me! No, me first, me! me, me, me. Uh, See, man, that's the kind of enthusiasm a good cook generates. <laughs> and how do you make a cook so good? Beat him! That's how! <laughs> right! Now, I think a little vodka aperitif may be in order. Down the hat, Sam Caddy Petrovich! <laughs> She get the deed out of it. No, Auntie. Grigory Grigorievich, there's no deed of title in my name. He's lying. But he got very angry when I tried asking him for details. Oh, I bet he did. Oh, Ivan. I keep thinking about the reapers, the swooshing of the scythes. I tell you, I've missed out on a lot of things in my life, but I'm not going to get done over on this. Oh, so what are we going to do? Tell me more about this Masha. What does she look like? Well, uh, I didn't really notice. You sat opposite her at lunch. I was concentrating on my cheese fritters. Was she good looking? I'm not sure. What, what colour was her hair? Sort of blondie. Blackish brown. Why are you asking me all these questions? Oh, my dear, dear Vanya. You're such a little boy, aren't you? Huh. What do you mean by that? You know what, Vanya? Tomorrow I want you to go back over to Grigori's. Oh, not again. No, he won't budge on that deed, I'm telling you. Don't worry about the deed. In fact, don't even mention it. Don't mention it? Today you want me to go on about it, tomorrow you don't want me to mention it. I'm confused. Just make sure you have a good chat with Masha. Just the two of you. Oh, Lord. What would I say? I'm useless talking to women. You talk to me all right, don't you? Yes, but that's different. You're not like other women. Well, what did you talk to her about yesterday? 
Igneous rock formations. Well, there's probably quicker routes to a girl's heart. Anyhow, how can I get her alone? Oh, that's easy. Just tell Grigori you want to have a tete-a-tete with his sister. Just the two of you. To get to know her. He won't mind that. But I will. Honestly, Auntie, I'm quite happy as I am. Can't I just do some heavy manual labour round the estate instead? There'll be plenty of time for that, Vanka. Now, just you do as your auntie says. I have to be alone with your sister. What? I have to get to know her better. In a -a tete-a-tete situation. I cannot control my ardour. Well, sir, I suggest you get your ardour under control this instant. Or you can kiss goodbye to your tete-a-tete with Masha. It's all right, Grigori. I'm uh, more than capable of looking after myself. Oh, Masha! I didn't see you there. I was just attending to my toilet. What, behind the settee? I, uh, dropped my lace kerchief and was just stooping down to retrieve it. I'd better be going. Don't go, Ivan. Are you sure you don't want him to go? Leave us be, Grigory. I'm sure Ivan Fyodorovich has many things he wants to say to me. Well, if you say so. Actually, I need to press on. I've got a consignment of new whips arriving from Donetsk. And they won't break themselves in, you know. He works so hard, my brother. I like a man who works. Do you work hard? Um. You're trembling. Come and sit down and, and let's have a conversation. But no talk about rocks today, you naughty boy. Very well. So, what shall we talk about? Oh, no. You're the man... It's up to you to make the conversation. So, I'll sit here looking pretty and uh, wait for you to woo me with your fancy romantic talk. (laughs) I'm I'm waiting. (coughs) I shot some rats yesterday. So, how did you get on? It was the most embarrassing half an hour of my entire life. You spent half an hour alone with her? That is encouraging. Oh, but Andy, you weren't there. She must think me an absolute idiot. Nonsense. I'm I'm sure you acquitted yourself splendidly. How did you leave it? How did I leave it? I just crept out of the room while she was staring out of the window. Oh, wistfully gazing across the fields, thinking about love, I dare say. She was banging her forehead against the glass last time I looked. Still, you mustn't give up. Faint heart never won fair maid. You must go back tomorrow. Oh, don't make me go back, please. But what about the reapers? The beautiful swathe of grass... If you marry Masha, you can take your pick of land as dowry. We've got quite enough land as it is. I'm absolutely exhausted. It was easier repelling the Mongols from Novosibirsk than it is living here. What about the little ones? The little ones? What are you talking about? The little children you and Masha will have. Little Andre and and, and Sonia. Not forgetting little Kostya. Who are these people? Your children. It'll be a dream come true for me, the patter of tiny feet. The Lord never meant it for me to have children, but now he's seen fit to give me a chance. Oh, I'd be so good with them. I'll take them all round the estate, show them all the trees and the fruits and the little animals. I can just see them trotting along behind me. Oh, what's wrong with you? You look as though you've seen a ghost. Um... I'm not feeling well, Auntie. I think I'd better go and have a lie down. Mm, all this excitement's obviously been too much for you. You go to bed, Vanka. We've got to start rebuilding that dam first thing tomorrow. Ivan? <laughs> what? Ivan? What? Oh. Who is it? It's me, your wife. You're not my wife. Leave me alone. It's no use running away. I'll always catch up with you. How did you get there? I'm everywhere. Look, look in your hat. My hat? Oh! How did you get in there? We're We're everywhere. everywhere. Who said that? We did. We did. I've got to get away. 
I've got to get away. I've got to get away. I've got, I've got to get away. Right, where's my trousers? Oh, bother! Get I can't see a thing. Where's my tunic? Dash it. Hurry up, man. Hurry up. What are you doing? Ah, uh, get away from me. Get away. Thanker, what on earth's the matter? What are you doing getting dressed in the middle of the night? I'm leaving. But what do you mean, you leave? I'm going back to my regiment. I've had enough. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not. My mind's made up. I shall ride to Kharkov at first light. You can send me trunk on. But, Vanky, you can't. You and mother were always telling me to be more assertive. Well, now I am being. I'm going, and that's that. I'd rather freeze to death and get eviscerated by a tartar than have to talk to her again. Well, you don't have to marry her. You say that, but you'll change your mind. You're all in it together. All you You women. (laughs) Now, out of me way. I'm, I'm going to saddle a horse. Don't go, Vanya. Too late. Goodbye, Auntie. Please don't go, Vanya. What about the patch of grass? What about the little children? Hello! Oh, don't leave me here on my own again. <laughs> Come in. Colonel Rubby Askin? Yes? It's me. Sponker. Sponker? No, sorry, I don't know you. But I, I only left your unit six weeks ago. Very high turnover of men out here, Sponker. Can't be expected to remember every Tom, Dick and Harry, can I? My aunt? What about your aunt? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Look, I was wondering if I could have my commission back. But you only just left by your own admission. Yes, well, something cropped up. So if I could just have my job back and send me somewhere where there's no women... Isn't there that tribe up the Yeragalkin River that keep their women permanently incarcerated inside biscuit battles? Maybe I could be stationed up there. We can't just let people come and go as they please. This is the Russian army. You decommissioned yourself, and I'm afraid you stay decommissioned. But I travel 3,000 miles from home to get back here. Well, you'll just have to travel 3,000 miles back again. I'm sure there'll be people there pleased to see you. Ivan! Ivan! We are waiting! (laughs) (laughs) Sponker was played by Griff Rhys Jones, Colonel Drobyashkin by Stephen Moore, and The Aunt by Anne Rye. Grigori was played by David Fleishman, The Driver by Rob Pickavance, and Masher by Joe Joyner. Ivan Fyodorovich Sponka and his aunt by Jim Poyser was based on a short story by Nikolai Gogol and produced in Manchester by Susan Roberts.